Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 19th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start with VMware today. We got another uh, critical vulnerability that VMware patched the CVE 2022-22972. It's an authentication bypass, and it does affect VMware Workspace One Access, Identity Manager, We Realize Automation. And VMware did assign it a CVSS V3 base score of 9.8. An attacker does need access to the user interface and will be able to gain administrative access without the need for any authentication. So VMware does recommend that you apply the patch quickly. No exploit yet as far as I know, but of course they tend to come pretty quickly. And the tricky part here is a little bit that the vulnerable component here really is the VMware Identity Manager. So if you have this deployed with any other uh, VMware products, uh, you may also have an issue. And talking about these vulnerabilities being exploited rather quickly in April, VMware did publish security advisories that listed a number of different vulnerabilities, including a server-side template injection issue, essentially an arbitrary code execution vulnerability that could be exploited also via the web interface. Well, Barracuda is now reporting that this vulnerability is already being exploited, so definitely patch now and applying this new patch should actually also fix uh, this older vulnerability. So the May patch does include the April fixes. And then we got new problems with Bluetooth Low Energy. Bluetooth Low Energy is known to be vulnerable to a relay attack where an attacker is essentially intercepting the request from the authenticator, like a phone, to the device, like, for example, a car, and then is able to replay that in order to, for example, repeatedly open the car or start the car to drive it. Now, one countermeasure that was implemented against these attacks is to check for variations in latency. The way these attacks were implemented in the past, it added about 30 milliseconds of latency uh, to uh, the exchange, and that was uh, far outside sort of the normal range of these latency variations and was detectable. So this was a common countermeasure that was uh, taken against uh, these uh, relay attacks. Now, the new attack that was uh, now being discussed by the NCC group uh, does only add 8 milliseconds of latency because it operates on the link layer and uh, this is something that is currently not detectable and within the normal range of sort of latency variations. Now of course in order to launch the attack an attacker has to first record the exchange however this apparently is possible as long as the real key that for example opens the car is within about the 25 meters of the device so it's somewhat plausible that for example while you're in a shop and your car is parked outside that this attack could be successful or if you're keeping your keys close to the car at home. Now, the headline here of uh, the news reports and such mentioned Tesla as uh, the target, but this is really more a fundamental uh, Bluetooth low energy issue. And just, uh, well, Tesla Model 3 as well as Model Y are using Bluetooth low energy, so these cars are vulnerable. And the FBI released one of its uh, flash bulletins uh, stating that they have seen a good number of compromised e-commerce websites where the attacker injected PHP code into the checkout pages in order to add malicious code and scrape credit cards. The attack seems 
pretty simple and straightforward. Now, it doesn't really say here how the attacker first got access to the system, but there are suggestions that it was just a weak password or the like. Well, if an attacker is able to modify your PHP pages, then it doesn't really matter what programming language you use. You'll end up with the attacker's code in whatever language uh, you are offering them to use. Nice set of indicators of compromise here from the FBI, but ultimately, you really have to check whether or not your pages got modified. These very specific file names and such are likely going to change very quickly. And Microsoft is making changes to how resellers are able uh, to administer customer systems. Resellers have become a major entry vector where resellers and service providers are compromised to then ultimately compromise their clients. And currently, Microsoft offers something called delegated administration privileges. So resellers are able uh, to administer uh, their customers' systems systems. Well, uh, this is likely going to be changed soon to granular delegated admin privilege, the GDAP, in order to gain more control over what these resellers are able to do to their systems in case, for example, accounts are compromised. And one way this will also happen is by disabling unused uh, privileges. So uh, that way attackers uh, won't be able to use privileges that you're likely not going to need anyway. But that, of course, needs some review. And uh, Microsoft basically states you should probably get ready for it in Q. Three Microsoft will release a tool to migrate these old accounts to the more granular ones. And at the same time, you also won't be able to create any new delegated admin privileges. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.